the FAO Council of African Presidents proved to be an unmitigated disaster. Even the FAO BOT Board of Trustees itself have become comatose, though not completely dead. As if the foregoing was not bad enough, our liaison with the city of Columbus and the mayor's office, Mr. Abdi Razak, took up another job with the US federal government and was replaced by yet another Abdi, this time Mr. Abdi Sufi. What manner of man was this new Abdi in comparison to the former Abdi? No one knew. Everything to be in a state seemed to be in a state of debilitating flux. For me and my colleagues on the Board of Trustees of the FAO, the choice was clear. Let all the years of our efforts go to waste and let the FAO die an unnatural death or gird our loins and get to work on the necessary triage needed to resuscitate the FAO and put it on the road to recovery. Thus, when my colleagues on the Board of Trustees of the FAO <coughs> asked that I take on the responsibility of serving as chairman, I knew we had a Herculean task ahead of us. But I was also unwilling, like my colleagues, to let a potentially great organization simply fade into oblivion. Moreover, the new Abdi at the CCRC, much to our good fortune and delight, proved to be a dynamic, progressive, and Africanist who was as determined as a number of members of the FAO Board of Trustees to see the Lazarus-like resurrection and proper rehabilitation of the FAO. In fact, when I went to the Ohio Secretary of State's office to check on the statutory status of the FAO, I discovered to my dismay and that of Mr. Abdi Sufi, that it had been canceled by the Secretary of State's office as a non-functioning entity. Mr. Abdi and I paid the required fee for the reinstatement of the FAO of the Ohio State Secretary's office from our pockets. At a minimum, I was determined to achieve a number of milestones that will reset the FAO on a progressive trajectory and provide for whatever, whoever comes after me as chairperson, the capacity for the achievement of bigger and better things. We successfully organized and enacted FAOO's end of year banquets for three consecutive years, from 2011 to 2013, each year making the banquet bigger and better, thus maintaining the organization's public visibility, recognition, and brand. We saw to the creation of an FAOO African Soccer League, African Soccer League of Ohio, ASLO, which functioned very successfully for one calendar year <coughs> under the able leadership of Mr. Eric Ahieko from Ghana. ASLO also floundered somewhat this year, mainly because of lack of funds. But the FAO was never going to be able to raise sufficient amount of funds unless and until it secures for itself the IRS 501c tax exempt status. I am happy and proud to announce that the FAO has successfully filed for and secured the IRS 501c tax exempt status under my watch as chairman of the board. Today I am successfully handing over the reins of power to my successor, who I am happy and proud to announce this evening, is Ms. Kadra Mohammed from Somalia. I am not going to remain president for life or until a coup d'etat sends me packing bag at all. Ladies and gentlemen, in the last few years, a number of critics and cynics have expected, predicted, perhaps even hoped that the FAO would fail so they can say, we told you so. But the FAO has survived and will continue to prosper and thrive under the able leadership of Ms. Kadra Mohammed, along with all our support for our motivation, cause, goal, and objective is noble, needed, and a worthy one.
and unite Africans in the great state of Ohio and thus make them a stronger, more productive, and self-assured community in the great state of Ohio. Let the naysayers keep pointing fingers. We will keep our shoulders to the wheel and keep making progress. Ladies and gentlemen, while I cannot unequivocally tell you this evening that the state of the FAO is strong yet, I can report to you without equivocation that the future of the FAO is bright. Thank you very much. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please give him panel again one of our Um, you've done a remarkable job, sir. Thank you so much uh, for your leadership. So what's FAO? FAO, as you heard the outgoing chair, is not a social service uh, or service provider organization. It's an advocacy organization that has uh, advocated for the community, bringing united voice, even if it's once a year, uh, to represent and show uh, muscle of unity of African uh, communities, African immigrant communities here in Central Ohio. Uh, we have about all 54 nations of, of, of Africa is represented here in Syria. The other day I was uh, there last summer and a group of young kids were playing. So I was told they were from Benin. I didn't know we had such a large community from Benin that shows, and I was told, it's hundreds of them, matter of fact, from that particular nation of West African nation of Benin. Um, just an example. So any community you may, I mention, uh, whether it's Eritrea, Senegal, Somalia, you, you have thousands and thousands of communities here. To have a, a coherent unity uh, organizations such as FAO who represent uh, the interests of those communities uh, and, and voices, uh, the, the concerns, and uh, shows unity is something that I really uh, we all, all believe in. And, and uh, it, it, again, uh, I have a great hope that, as, as Ameka said, that as every year we will get bigger and better. Uh, I want to acknowledge a few more leaders that are in the house. Um, we have Mahadi Wasama, uh, a very good friend of mine, works back at Ranch. Mahadi, you know we all have commitments and work and busy and family. This is the man, whenever I need him or any public cause, uh, whether it's a youth, uh, community crisis, individual family crisis because once in a while I'll get a call of one African family, a newcomer or immigrant or refugee having some family issues, financial issues, health problems. Mahali is always there if it's three in the morning. And for that I would like to ask everyone to give a round of applause. Is um, so um, I haven't said his name. But the fact that I will be calling him for the first, making him the first speaker, makes tell us it all. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Tahir Ali. Thank you, thank you. Well, uh, this event speaks for itself. So I don't think it needs a lot of uh, speech makers or people that will say a lot because here, what I will say first of all is that uh, when many African countries were getting their independence, uh, early 50s, late 60s, there were some of the African leaders, early leaders, who were advocating to have a united Africa in the continent of Africa. And if I name few of those leaders, even though he took back all the visions and the good things that he had, one of them was Zimbabwe's president right now, uh, Mugabe. The other African leaders who always also prominently uh, advocating for African unity was late President of Somalia, Mohamed Ziad Barri. So today, it's a great honor and a special event to see all the Africans in Central Ohio.
together, united, in one voice and one fish. That is absolutely a trend that speaks for itself and does not need an introduction or explanation from anyone. If I come back to this particular event, it's also an honor to welcome the new chair, Khadra Mohammed, a friend of mine, a very prominent uh, leader in the Somali community and now the leader of the All Africans. I also want to commend the going or you know the uh, leaving president of the organization, my brother, who has done a remarkable job uh, in the years he was the leader of this organization. The only thing I'll say is that all of you who are here today should be proud of yourself being a part of this historic event. And we also take an oath as individuals and as a community to make sure that we stay and thrive as a one unity, one united community here in Central Ohio. And at the same time, speak one voice when we're talking about the issues that are facing Africans wherever they are, whether it's back home or here in Central Ohio. With that, I will say thanks to Mr. Sofi, and I congratulate the new chair, and I also commend the outgoing chair for the wonderful job that he has done. Thank you very much. Uh, as you heard the outgoing chair mention a number of times of the, uh, the, the when this whole process started, the foundation, uh, the committee that uh, put together the first uh, blueprint of this whole idea. Dr. Salashi was the leader, and I mentioned him earlier with his role as a, a champion for our community here. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome Dr. Salashi Asma. Good evening. Uh, thank you, Abdi. Thank you, sir. Um, my name is Salashi, as, as Abdi introduced me, Kadra. Welcome uh, for the acceptance of the leadership. and. And Professor Mbeka and others who have been working and keeping the organization um, up to this stage is really wonderful. Uh, the Federation of African Organizations, just to give you some background history, uh, we are looking a united box for the Africans and to come together and make in, in our voices uh, collectively at the state, as a city, as a county level, because our African community is growing. It's very growing from East, Central, South, West Africa. But our voices are not heard. The Asians, they have a commission at the state level. The Hispanics, they have the Latin Americans, they have their own voices at the state level. But we don't have the only institution that the city mayor who did the new Americans initiative will give us, you know, for Africans reach the African community or the coordinator. And that position is the only voices of now for our Africans that we have got. We don't have any legitimate organization. For that reason, we got together discussed around 2005. And those founding members of the Federation of African Organizations are from Liberia, Cameroon, Ethiopia, Ghana, and Congo. These were the founding members at that time. And then in 2006, incorporated. Uh, then we continue to move, and then as our brothers, like our Professor Emeka and others, join us that was the second phase, which we started the steering committee. And that steering committee worked hard, really. It was a movement. And every African's member, sisters, and brothers were so happy. And then we came with this idea to have the Council of African Presidents and to have another Board of Trustees. The Board of Trustees already, you know, to just lead the organization. There are some different ideas. We continue and we hope that Council of African Presidents are working with that we did. So, but now, now we are here. What, really, I don't want to go back. We will discuss that, what went well and what was not good, you know, when we have table discussion. But really what I will advise my friends and the new leadership is going forward. The Board of Trustees is the legitimate organization that has to lead the organization. 
the Council of African Presidents is geared for our policy makers or to really have a representation for each African. But you have to select someone as a captain to lead this organization. And of course, you know, meets every month maybe for every two months and see policies and directions in general. But we have to find with someone, and I was always insisting in our previous meetings, we have to find that person that can lead us as our capital, who has an interest, who has a passion, who has a commitment, and even finding a resource and to pay for his time if we want this organization to be to become a capital. We have to find that person. I mean, board of directors, yes. They are good. The Council of African Presidents, we can select them. We can have them. But day to day, we have to execute what the goals, what the purpose, what the missions that we have to make and to lead. And that's what I'm going to recommend for you. We have to find that person, whether it's Kadra or others, that to execute our day to day voices is very important. That's a key person. That <coughs> then you can survive. Otherwise, you know, we have a lot of jobs and workers, you know, everybody is busy. It's very hard. Running a non-profit organization, advocacy organization, it's not an easy job. But we have our D, at least we got support and resources. My organization now has a good infrastructure. We can support, we can help. Now we have resources. We can support each other. But people want to see some results and outcomes and impact. And that's very important. So, I think for Africans, we always pray to be united. It's, it's a difficult job to, to bring it together. Let alone Africa, even one nation, you know how it's difficult. So that's my only advice for today. And make sure that our purposes, our visions, or our vision are still there. And let's look at mission and goals. Let's put aside our differences and looks at mission and vision. And I <coughs> really um, pray for you and wish you and I will support you, whatever that needs this, the Federation to move forward. But I really insist they start that person to help and today, the day-to-day -day operation of the organization. So, thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Selassie Asfa. Um, the, the good things, most encouraging things that I learned from FAAO is, is the genuine, um, you know, upfront approach. Um, you know, some people will exaggerate and cover up. You have a problem, put it on the table. As the outgoing chair mentioned, the challenges and difficulties that uh, it took the process ups and downs, and that's the way the life is. Uh, if you are open with your constituents, then you, it can be part of the solution and help you. And that is one of, one of the things that I really like, like to uh, appreciate and, and command uh, for, your, for your work on leadership. And, uh, we have some of founding uh, members of the board, <coughs> Dr. Dr. Rather Engineer uh, K. Anwokwe is in the house. He is the founding members of the organization and still remains to be a board member and he will be on the program later. Also, Elliot Osande of Nigeria, a board member also, is also in the house. Uh, I see from my good friend, businessman, Abdirisad Ale Isa, uh, also a great supporter. Um, uh, at this time, I would like to call uh, one of our uh, supporters of this whole process to give him a few uh, statements. He's a good friend of mine, uh, call him a partner, brother Jibril Muhammad. Good evening. Um, this is a great occasion, a great uh, event where Africa is going to show its unity. Uh, to show his support for the uh, selection and for election of Sister Katrina Mohammed 
as the chairwoman of the Federation of African Organizations. First of all, uh, I would like to congratulate her for this important leadership role that she's assuming for the whole African community in the state of Ohio. That's a big responsibility, and may Allah support her in that role. Um, it's a responsibility that requires a lot of uh, hard work and dedication, and I'm confident that Capra is capable of uh, meeting the expectations of the various African communities that unite under the umbrella of the FAO. And uh, I pledge my support uh, to this organization. Somali can uh, support the organization, and I will part of the team of supporters that stands up for any occasion that Africa uh, gets together to advocate for its rights. Um, there are things that are going on at the state level. Um, my colleagues uh, at the Tameka and Salashi have spoken about and Abdi have spoken about the current state of uh, advocacy within the African community in the state of Ohio. And the only thing so far is the appointment of Abdi Sofi by the mayor of the city of Columbus, Michael Coleman, as the African Communities Coordinator for the city. Uh, there is a process going on to establish a state level African body to represent and voice the needs of African communities. As of now, there is no legitimate entity that has been appointed by the policy makers of this state that advocates for the needs of the African communities in Ohio. Um, there is an Hispanic, co I mean the, the Ohio Hispanic and Latino Affairs Commission, for example, which when, when, when the director of that organization gives a call to the state, say Department of Education or the Department of Health, every other job has to be stopped. We have to focus on the item that has been requested by that level. They are that important. They, that, it's that powerful. Um, I've been working at the state of Ohio, at the Office of Policy, at some point in time. And I remember you, you sometimes get called on to stop everything else and focus on developing the materials needed by that commission. Because it's needed for policy, it's needed for legislature, it's needed for various other things. For Africa, we don't have such a thing here in Ohio, and that's where we, we need to get uh, in the near future. So I hope uh, FAO and uh, Sister, Khadra, uh, Sister Khadra's leadership will drive and become very strong voice for the African communities in Ohio. Thank you very much. Uh, with that, I want to call Sister uh, Comfort Kenneth. Good evening, everyone. I would like to say thank you to the, to the organizers of this event for the invitation. And I want to congratulate this woman, <laughs> who is the first woman to head such an organization. Of course, I also head the Liberian organization in Columbus. And when I took over, our slogan is active participation by everyone moves us forward. And based on the information and what I've heard here today, it comes to this organization as well active participation by everyone can move this group forward. We can't have our voices heard. We just cannot sit around the sideline and expect someone else to do it for us. So I'm pleased to be a part of this organization and I give my commitment to do whatever I can to move Africans in Columbus for. Thank you.
Al Women's Advancement. Ironically, headed by the same woman that we are going to be sworn in uh, this morning. And I was so proud to see so many women leaders, African women, head in different organizations. Uh, the Weavers uh, have a new chair. Uh, it's a very strong organization, women, uh, Nigerian women. Uh, we have our Sudanese sister, Ilham, will you please stand up? <laughs> thank, you, thank you for coming. Uh, so, uh, with that, I will uh, now call Brother Osende, uh, who is also a board member, who will speak on behalf of the board, uh, Elliot Osende, please. Elliot. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be here. And I'm excited about what we're doing and the reason why we're here today. I was called a couple of years ago to join this organization in an effort to find a way to move forward. And because of the two men that I've known for years and their loyalty dedication to whatever they set forth to do, I decided to be part of it. The two gentlemen are here, the current outgoing chairman and Mr. Masi K. So we had a lot of talk about all the ups and downs from FAO to CAP. I was even the uh, Cap leading Council of African Presidents, I was even the secretary at the time. We had our challenges, but to God be the glory, we are here today. I want to encourage everybody. Transparency, dedication, and honesty as we move forward to take this organization to the next level. And at the same time, to let everybody who is here present know that I'm let the chairman know and the current chairperson that we're going to swear in today that I'm committed and dedicated to put everything that I have that I can muster to take this organization from where it is right now to a different level. At any time, I'm called upon or my business is called upon to assist willing to do so at this time. And I'm glad that with all the troubles that we've gone through, and even the fact that we're sitting here today, we had a meeting about two, three weeks ago. That was actually the first time that I met, I guess I can call her the chairperson now, but I'm chairperson. And she was introduced she said some things about what our vision is for FAO is, what our expectations are. And I was very impressed. And even as I left that meeting that day, I did speak to Zemeka. I was encouraged and I had to talk to him about how excited I was to be able to walk a lady like this with the bona fides that she has. Because I think it's very important based on our experiences here. I'm also fortunately the head of the Nigerian organization in Columbus here as well for about eight, nine years now. Yes, there are challenges, but sometimes it's important that when we begin to constitute a team, dedication to the cause is the most important thing that we need to consider. Dr. Celeste even alluded to it a little bit by saying we need to be very careful based on the past experiences that we had as to really depends on where the chairman wants to lead the organization. Maybe having capped the Council of African Presidents in here. I will also suggest, although I will be at the table as well, to seriously make sure this is pushed and move in that direction, <coughs> to have a group of people uh, not just only uh, dedicated, believe in what everybody's been trying to do for years, but maybe some business leaders in 
included. Um, partly because of the fact that I found over the years that some of the decisions, planning, policy, and all that that we put in place has always been viewed and even processed through the prism of, of just say, okay, uh, this is what we're doing, and most of it pro bono. Uh, what is the return on the investment? Capital, human, and otherwise that was put forward. So I will suggest in that light that as we move forward, we seriously begin to look at, at an organization that can be run business -like. We're going to advocate we're dealing with all these folks who are head of organization, the state, uh, the city, other organizations that have been mentioned here, who are well far established than we are. We have enough grounds to, to cover. We're going to need everybody's support and all the advice we can get. Uh, let's try to have an open down policy. Whatever, nothing is off the table. Whatever the idea is going to come from, let's try to use it. Uh, this was a little bit impromptu, so uh, I'll try to cut it short. I thank everybody for coming. Wish FA all the best. Wish Madam Chairman the best. He had my support. I also want to thank the outgoing uh, Chairman, Professor Mecca, for all the job he has done. Uh, Dr. Seleshi, that I worked with in the past before, and the other members here now that I have not even mentioned in the name. Thank you all for coming. Thank you all. Paul. Uh, Mazi K and work well to conduct our swarming in ceremony. But if you go, uh, Seleshi has alluded to it, Emeka has alluded to it, and in Igbo, I'm Igbo Nigeria, we have a saying that Nayo war, EKB, Unu Yenian, Nayanian, Nayan, or work for us. It sounds great. It Just like we were saying earlier, before everybody came in, somebody thought that the only people in the world were Somalia, not the best one Nigerians. <laughs> what I said is this uh, FAO has had a long journey. It hasn't been smooth, it hasn't been victorious, it hasn't been unpainful. It has been very painful to the point of it was almost moribund. But the problem I said is this: literally, is if your father is dead, if the first son cannot bury the father for financial reasons, the second son should bury the father because the first son did not kill the father. So when we are going through what we are going through with FAO, there was every opportunity for everybody to just walk away. Because it's just like the typical nomadic life, a cow that is owned by the public does not belong to anybody. That means it's not my cow, it's not his cow, let the cow die. But because of the cultural upbringing we have, it is a community uh, property. We have to make sure we keep it alive. And thank God at that particular juncture, we have able-bodied men and women and make a bit steering the state of sheep to make sure we're on course. Elliot, Stephen Fumba, who is not here today from Sierra Leone, um, let me add a look. And then Fatima, Fatima from uh, Mauritania. Mauritania. Okay. And of course, and, uh, and also uh, at her next from Eritrea. And I have to tell you, uh, a big blessing was Abdi. Abdi took his job not as a civil servant, he took his job committed to ensure that what FAO is, up, is doing is part and parcel in his heart. And we really appreciate that. We really do. But then and then we were able to rally around and put FAO and we for the past two years have been very successful in having uh, one of the kind events. 
So what we are trying to do this evening is those that have doubt if FAO is still on life support, please take it out of your mind, join. Again, in Igbo, they say, in Pokataka, I do a job. When you work both hands together, they get killed. And the other one is, <laughs> that one is a little bit more. <laughs> so I'm hold up on that. <laughs> so what I'm trying to say now is that we are here today and we are making history. The history America hasn't been able to do. And that history is we are electing the first woman to head FAO before America elects the first woman to be the president of America. <laughs> On that. So, having said that, Madam Chairman, do you mind coming up here and then give me your life? <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, uh, Madam Chairman, I repeat after me. I do hereby swear to uphold the spirit and letter of the Constitution. Of, of the Federation of African Organizations in Ohio to serve, to serve safeguard, safeguard and, promote and promote the interest of the African community, the of the community in the state of Ohio, state of Ohio and to uphold the, the laws of the state of Ohio and the United States of America and to the best of my abilities, so help me God. Congratulations. Honorable Herschel Craig of Columbus City Council is in the house. Back in, back in 2003, almost 10 years ago, some people might not think I'm not at all. I joined the Franklin County Court of Courts staff of Common Police Court uh, 11 years ago. Uh, one of the people, one of the leaders who welcomed me uh, on my first day from the leadership staff was uh, a young man, rather than then, uh, Herschel. And he took me out with his own car uh, while we were driving in Columbus, facing a few different, the Kirk of course have different sites, uh, the title agencies that comes under the administration of Kirk of Court. So, so we were driving west side, and he gave me some guidance, instructions how to survive the public offices. And the good things about the public work. And since then, we remain very close friends. He became an elected member of the city council. Uh, uh, yeah, has an honorable work, uh, cares about the people. Initially, though, he would say, and this is 10 years ago, I have to you doing, bro? I love you. And I wouldn't believe him. I thought he was some kind of politician who just kept saying, I love you. I never believed he ever loved me or anything. But as we worked together, as he calls me and you know, life's ups and downs and I switched to the municipal court and left the job. He was calling me to check on me, facing me, and I realized the fact that really this guy was a very loving guy. He really cared. And not only Abdi but loves people in general. A great leader, a great friend, an honorable, honorable member of the city council, a champion for community progress. Ladies and gentlemen, Honorable Herschel Craig. Dr. Benjamin Elijah Mays, the mentor to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said this, it must be born in mind that the tragedy of life does not lie with not reaching your goals. The tragedy in lies with not having a goal to reach is not a calamity to die with dreams unfulfilled. It is a calamity not to have any dreams. It is not a disgrace to not reach the stars. The 
there is a disgrace to not have any stars to reach it. Then he says this most compelling thing, it is not failure but low aim that is a sin. Let me thank you for the privilege of being here with you because I recognize you that your dreams are not small. Um, I see Kay back there and I know his son when he became an Eagle Scout. I had the privilege of being with him and I call him my son also. So and if you do me a great favor, I said, there he is. <laughs> there he is, that great scholar right there. <laughs> Amen, looking handsome and cool and debonair. <laughs> and I need to also honor this, the doctor. Would you give him a great round of applause? I love him. And would you honor my, I call him also, I'm 65, so I can call him my son right there. <laughs> would you also honor him? But it gives me a great pleasure and honor to be with you. I apologize, I won't be able to be with you long tonight. Uh, I've been going all day long. Uh, I just left some young people at a recital, uh, some work that they were just extraordinary young people, and thank God I can spend my day a lot uh, with young people that are gives us all hope uh, for the future. I'm a great grandfather now. So, uh, you know, I, I thank you so much. It is an honor, and I thank God for that privilege. But to be with you today, uh, all of my people, those that have tread and shoulders that we are all standing on, it is a great honor for me to be with you today. Uh, the work that you will be doing, and I, I just need to say from the outset, that Doc, the reason that our city is so great uh, is because of its diversity, its people. We have great buildings. We have, uh, uh, you know, the Sire of Mile, if you have a chance to visit it. It's a, it's a great thing that we're doing in downtown Columbus and many of the things that we're doing in our community. Kay is, is an architect and great mind, brilliant man. But all of those buildings don't, they pale in comparison with our people. And so my message really to you and thanking you uh, for being here in, in the city of Columbus, those of you who are not from the city of Columbus, we say thank you for being here because we recognize that anything that we're going to do now and in the future has to do with our young people and how we continue to develop them and we continue to encourage them uh, to reach beyond all of our capabilities, what we might see now, they will have the vision to see. But it starts with parents, and it starts uh, with our forebearers and those that have paid heavy prices. My mother came to Columbus as a living man, and I don't know anybody greater. She continued to educate herself and insisted that my brothers and, and my sister continue to learn and to grow. My mother's been gone now for just about four years in, in April. Uh, but I always honor her and those that have paid a heavy price uh, that I could do the work that I'm currently doing right now. And all of those men and women, unnamed heroes, that have paid a great price. But God bless you. We honor your work. We honor you being in the city of Columbus and those that are coming beyond in this great organization. Uh, for what you will mean uh, to this nation and, and African nations and all those that have contributed so much in the lives of our world. Because we are one world of people that will love and honor our children, our families, and make a difference in the lives of those that we come behind us. So God bless you. Thank you for the privilege of being with you today. Now the moment we're all waiting for. I will all know Katra. I will not do a lot of long introduction of who she is and what she does and how long she has been here. She's a mother, a businesswoman, um, and a scholar, I can say. Um, she's a master of social work. 
She is the executive director of Somali Work Center for Somali Women, Somali Women's Advancement. She uh, advocates and uh, volunteers for a number of activities, women, youth, oriented uh, activities. She is an advocate. Uh, I don't know how she does it all. But what I know is Katua uh, will, I don't know what we have done without her in, in Central Ohio, Zero Columbus. She did, made a lot of contribution. Uh, most often, when the people are alive and here stay with you in front of you, we forget and we talk about when they when they move out or when they die or you know oh what a great woman she was and you know we, tell, we don't acknowledge when people are here with us and Katra I am very proud to know her to call her a sister a friend and now my boss says I am uh, affiliated with FAAO ladies and gentlemen as our father do you Help me welcome the new chair of Federation of African Organizations, Katia Mohamed. Thank you, brother Andy. woman today. Um, I would like to start thanking for all of you for coming tonight, for making this event happen, and for joining us this uh, important uh, celebration for the leadership and for the future of the way. I want to thank Professor Meda, the, the outgoing chairman of the organization, for his job, for his work, for his leadership, and for helping me transition. But I also like to acknowledge, as has been, it has been shared before, the foundation of this organization, the, the founders of the organization, as we saw some of them tonight, like uh, Saleshe, who uh, helped establish this great initiative in our state. Um, let me go back a little bit about what the word Africa means to me. When I was young, very cool, I came to know Africa by seeing the leadership in Somalia, in the government of Somalia at the time. Um, I was born and raised in Somalia capital, and I am very proud that I lived there in the times that Africa was bright. Africa was in its bright and bright times when a lot of African nations gaining their independence from the colonial system when the Africanism and the spirit of Africanism was its highest. In 1974, um, the, co the Convention of African Organizations um, well, was done in Somalia in Odisha. And I will tell you, there was this building, uh, who knows, knows it, who have seen, seen it, before the unfortunate takeover, it was an enormous, very beautiful building. 
it was the biggest and the largest building I have ever seen at that point in my life. I was fortunate enough to live next to it, to live by it. I was there when it was erected. I mean, I was very young. I can't say, I can't tell if I was crawling or if I was walking. I don't want to folks here, my friends, to get the calculation and figure out that how that's how it <laughs> So, let me tell you this. I have a special memory. And in, in that convention, I remember when my mom and other women would walk from our neighborhood to go around the building to try to capture the, uh, the movements and the activities going on as the, 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 the convention was in Burkhashi. And a lot of African uh, head of states were flying in and, and we love, we live it. Uh, the same neighborhood that's not far away from the airport to where when the flights were about to land and they are very close in, we couldn't tell what carrier is that. And I remember that was a point of unit for Africa when my mom and other women tell to each other, even Haile Selassie came. <laughs> <laughs> and many of you may, may know what that's about. At, time, at times when a lot of African communities and countries were hostile to each other and Ethiopia and Somalia were not exception. And many people surprised that uh, Haile Selassie will flew in into Mogadishu and take part of, of the convention. And Mohamed Siad, the, the uh, Somali president at the time, Noun Jal Siad, was the head of the organization at the time. So during yeah, those times, so <laughs> And it was fortunate to know in history that many African countries were liberated. So I grew up in that history. I never see myself as a Somali. I will see myself as an African. I told uh, you the other day when we were at the uh, city council for um, Mandela memories that I thought, I always think the history of Nelson Mandela the legacy and the struggle and the apartheid movement and everything that that was thing that we look at that close. We thought it was personal to us. We, we, we it was close to home, literally. I thought Nelson Mandela as a household name. I thought it's someone that my father knew. Someone I did not figure out until I was uh, higher in school grade that this was happening the other side of us. We marched for that cause. We sing for Mandela's names. We memorize the heads of African uh, uh, states, the African capitals. We grew up that history and that legs. I'm proud to carry that memory with me. I came here as someone who was already uh, at least in a college uh, level. And I know what African history means. And then, I don't want it to take do, too long for that because I can go on and on because that will that will make my life if I think all day in Africa and what it was about many many years ago. And I would, I wish and I will I hope that one day I will see Africa against its right and all this poverty and this this uh, instabilization and all that will go away. That nowadays surrounded our image and the world. So, a few months ago, I got a call from two brothers, uh, two consecutive days. I get the first call from Abdul Khadr, also known as Khan. And that, that says all how someone loved the continent that they named their son African. So when brother African called me, he told me, he, along with Abdi, they nominated me for an award from FOA. And I will attend a beautiful night at FOA event when I was awarded. And that's how I become 
uh, knowing about the organization. Actually, I know the organization, and I was there the day that um, the, the Constitution was amended in 2006 or 2007, I don't remember, and the former governor was here. That's when I quoted uh, Professor Amadi said, we live in a great city in Columbus where Africans who don't meet in Africa meet. And I, and I thought about it, and I said, he's right. We don't meet with Africans from West Africa, from Southern Africa, in Africa, when we can easily meet in Columbus. So I think uh, if I reflect that with that means is why we are here tonight. To become united, to uh, think what we can do uh, about African problems, African heritage, African <coughs> continent. So after two nights of the event, then here my brother African called me again. And I said, what? He said, we want you to become the chairman of the and I said, what are you talking about? That's too big for me. Like, I, can't, I can't do that. And he said, of course you can do. And then the other night, the other Abu called, and I said, did you guys talk to him? They said, no, we didn't talk. Um, he said, we just we, we had you and our, our thoughts when we were thinking about this process and helping the rest of our leadership to figure out who, what leader we need to step in in the future for this. I appreciate that. And I want to thank them for that. I also want to thank Professor Omega and uh, Engineer Kay and the rest of the board of directors for the organization for um, their uh, selection for me to become the head of this organization for the coming future. And I also like to appreciate uh, the pledge from the other community leaders, such as uh, my sister from, from Liberia, uh, who pointed how proud she, she is that this organization elected elect the first woman. And I tell you how much and how proud I am that Liberia liberates Africa by electing a woman. Um, if I if I go back a little bit about uh, our our co contribution as as a diaspora, it's very important. Um, Africa has been experienced this thing called brain drain. I came to know in Africa by seeing a leadership in Somalia, in the government of Somalia at the time. Um, I was born and raised in Somalia capital, and I am very proud that I lived there through the times that Africa was bright. Africa was in its bright and bright times. When a lot of African nations gaining their independence from the colonial system. When the Africanism and the spirit of Africanism was its highest. In 1974, um, the, co the Convention of African Organizations um, well, was done in Somalia in Odisha. And I will tell you, there was this building, uh, who knows knows it, who have seen, seen it before the unfortunate takeover. It was an enormous, very beautiful building. It was the biggest and the largest building I have ever seen at that point in my life. I was fortunate enough to live next to it, to live by it. I was there when it was erected. 
I mean, I was very young. I can't say, I can't tell if I was crawling or if I was walking. I don't want the folks here, my friends, to get the calculation and figure out that how that's how old she is. <laughs> so, let me tell you this. I have a special memory, and in, in that convention. I remember when my mom and other women would walk from our neighborhood to go around the building to try to capture the, uh, the movements and the activities going on as the, 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 the convention was in progress. And a lot of African uh, head of states were flying in, and, and we love, we leave it uh, the same neighborhood that's not far away from the airport where when the flights were about to land, and they are very close in, we couldn't tell what carrier is that. And I remember that was a point of unit for Africa when my mom and other women tell to each other, even Haile Selassie came. <laughs> <laughs> and many of you may, may know what that was. At, time, at times when a lot of African communities and countries were hostile to each other. And Ethiopia and Somalia were not exception. And many people surprised that uh, Haile Selassie will flew in into Mogadishu and take part of, of the convention. And Mohammed Siad, the, the uh, Somali president at the time, known Jal Siad, was the head of the organization at the time. So during those times, um, and it was fortunate to know in history that many African countries were liberated. So I grew up in that history. I never see myself as a Somali. I will see myself as an African. I told uh, you the other day when we were at the uh, city council for um, Mandela memories that I thought, I always think the history of Nelson Mandela, the legacy and the struggle and the apartheid movement and everything, that that was thing that we look at that close. We thought it was personal to us. We, 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 it was close to home, literally. I thought Nelson Mandela as a household name. I thought it's someone that my father knew. Someone I did not figure out until I was uh, higher in school grade that this was happening the other side of Africa. We marched for that cause. We sing for Mandela's names. We memorize the heads of African uh, uh, states, the African capitals. We grew up that history and that legs. I'm proud to carry that memory with me. I came here as someone who was already uh, at least in a college uh, level, and I know what African history means. In the voices, by organizing the groups such as women and youth. That is my vision for the future of this organization. I would like now to reach as FOA can and should collaborate with African organizations and the faith communities with Columbus Metropolitan Library, the, uh, the, state, the Columbus State, the State Department of Education, and Columbus Public School System. And we have representatives from Columbus uh, School System tonight in society and society. Um, we would like to request from the city of Columbus, that goes to my brother Adi again, a donation of an old building or abandoned building for offer A, which we can reno renovate and do a permanent office of secretary place for FOA. We would like to draw up a comprehensive and up-to-date list of all African non-profit organizations in all the state of Hawaii. We would like to reach out to all African organizations based on Ohio and 
baby belong. We would like to initiate a statewide membership drive of African American nations again. We would like to include and um, initiate uh, contacts and membership for all African organizations that are in the heart. Uh, I appreciate and I am thankful for those who are already here with us tonight to extend their, uh, their help or their commitment in working with this great issue. Um, we would like to reconstitute the FFA Council of Presidents and its, its Executive Committee. It is a process that we would like, as time permits, to start and work on expanding our um, Executive Committee and our structural organization. And, of course, this is how I became known what a beautiful people are in the organization is when we plan and implement the FOA end of the year banquet. That is some of the things, among other things, that FOA as an organization will anticipate to carry out the coming future. Again, I would like to take the time. I know it's we are approaching the end of our day again. I would like to thank again and again for to everybody else um, by working together. Again, I would like to see Africa united in in Columbus. The professor said, "Here is where." we meet, when we cannot meet in, in Africa because of maybe the distance and, and geographical locations and all that. We don't have that barriers in here. We are all here. We make Columbus home. And I would like to see Columbus is where Africans who cannot meet in Africa can meet and can unite for Africa.